All right, on today's I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, I have another shit talking extravaganza from the Hall of Famer. Yes, the Hall of Famer, Terrell Owens, talking about his entire career, talking about the Tony Romo incident, we're talking about the push-up incident, we're talking about leadership, we're talking about his NFL celebrations, we're talking about today's NFL celebrations, we're talking about playing with an actual broken leg, we're talking about him doing sit-ups in his freaking driveway, learning from Jerry Rice, Playing for Andy Reid and the Philadelphia Eagles. Yo, in my opinion, this is the humanization of Terrell Owens. T.O. Like you've never heard him before. Get your popcorn ready. I talk so much shit that my voice is gone. G. Moody, last name rhymes with duty, is flying out to L.A. We're going to be face-to-face on the next I Am Rappaport Stereo podcast. Excuse my voice. So exciting, so dope to talk to T.O. Again, Terrell Owens, the Hall of Famer. That's right, I said it, the Hall of Famer. Coming up next on a smash mouth, I am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Let's go. Let me tell you something. Every man looks better in a suit. And if you're buying a suit, why would you buy a generic whack-ass, corny-ass suit off the rack when you can get a custom-made suit from Indochino. Okay, me and G. Moody just got hooked up head to toe, looking sharp in Indochino suits. Gerald got an all-black joint, and I got a beautiful dark gray suit coming soon to a red carpet near you. That's right. Me and G. Moody got suited and booted by Indochino. You could choose from hundreds of top quality fabrics and customize all the details, including your lapel, your jacket lining, monogram, all of it. Mine, of course, the inside of my suit says the Gringo Mandingo. It's beautiful. Indochino has been featured in major publications, including GQ, Forbes, Fast Company, and now they are the largest made to measure menswear company in the world. This is how it works, okay? You visit the showroom or shop online at Indochino.com. I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. That's Indochino.com. Pick your fabric. Choose your customizations. Submit your measurements. Place your order. And wait for the beautiful suit to arrive in just a few weeks. And this week, my listeners can get any premium Indochino suit for just $359 at Indochino.com when entering the promo code Rappaport. That's R-A-P-A-P-O-R-T. Go to Indochino.com. 50% off the regular price for made-to-measure premium suits. Plus, the shipping is free. That's Indochino.com. Promo code is Rappaport. Any premium suit for just $359 and free shipping. Incredible deal for an incredible suit that'll make you feel like a bubba a billion bucks. All right, my main man, T.O., Terrell Owens. I've been practicing it all day because the last time I saw you, I said Terrell Owens. <laughs> right. And you said you were going to fuck me up if I said... You New Yorkers. Terrell Owens. If so, I'm probably going to make the mistake. And probably say it again, I'm sure. Terrell, my first question is this, Okay. Hall of Fame, okay? Right. Would you rather be in the Hall of Fame or have this coveted Celebrity Game MVP trophy from 2010? I'll let you touch this puppy right here. Oh, I got a couple you can touch too. I just don't have them present right now. Excuse me. I mean, you have maybe you have one to what my two or three. Okay, but 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 the question is, is would you have because because I I won this. This is an internationally known fact. I won this Celebrity Game All Star Game MVP. By shutting you down, I had five points, seven fouls. I drilled a three <laughs> as soon as the game started, and I started talking greasy. So the question is this. Would you rather have the 2010 Celebrity Game All-Star MVP or be in the, the NFL Hall of Fame? It's a I, very simple question. I, I'd rather have that. You'd rather have this puppy I, right I, here? I, I'd rather have that right there. That looks very, very nice. I mean, I see you staring at this. Yeah, as I'm soon as you it. came in the room, you noticed it? I saw it, but I'm like, I didn't know what it was. It's polished? But 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 now, yeah, you you probably knocked some dust off of it right before I came in here. No, so. I keep this puppy clean. It's too, I keep this okay. puppy clean once right, a week cool. it gets a full polish i just thought maybe you stashed it in you know in the closet when was that 2010 
2010? Yeah, I the late great Stuart Scott. Stuart, it, it was, that was in New Orleans, right? Um, was it New Orleans? Or I think Dallas? it was actually uh, Phoenix. Phoenix. Was it Phoenix? It might have been Phoenix. And, and and if you remember correctly, um, the first the first, first play of, all, of the let's, game. Let's, let's 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 back it up a little okay, bit because you you said something that really has struck a chord. I can see. Bro, you don't did not, walk out on me, dude. You did not shut me down. That's <laughs> what you did not do, Terrell. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna tell you this: you one. did not shut me. down. Do you down. remember the first play of the game? I got no, the ball I don't, I don't, at the I don't three. Remember. I remember the other two or three MVPs that I've won, so I don't really recall. Whatever you do, don't walk out on this interview. I know I'm bringing up bad memories, but this is what happened: the first play of the game, the ball was tipped over to me in the in the free throw, uh, out of the jump ball. I got it at the top of the wing. Now it's the beginning of the celebrity. Uh, All star game, uh, game. Right. Yeah, you so should be deeming me up. You're on me. I stepped back, banged the three, and then I said, "All night, baby, all night." That's what I oh, said. Yeah. I said, "All night, baby, all night." He's doing exactly what I want to do right now. Just you, fall asleep and snore. He's you, right? talking about my dog. Do you do not remember me banging that three and then, no, and then, no, and then. Consequently, what happened was, is I think on the next play, you got the ball on the break. You were gonna try to yam it on me. You were going to try to bang it on my head. I stripped you. The foul was called because it was incidental contact, and you made one of two free throws. Now, you've played a lot of sports. Yeah. Obviously, you don't remember these details as well as I do. No, this is, yeah, this is, yeah, you have this etched down in your brain, like, by the second. Yes. Every possession. Yes, but but eventually I wound up fouling out of the game with seven fouls. They gave me an extra foul. Of course, and they gave you an MVP. How is that even, that, that shouldn't even be allowed. Five points, seven rebounds, seven fouls. It's it's you some got sort two, of triple double. You got two extra fouls. That's that's fine. I'm on an NFL player. Are you complaining about the fouls? Yeah, exactly. I'm give and I'm giving you what? College is five fouls, right? Not yes. The pros is six. So I'm giving you college. Okay. Five all right. fouls. All right. There, there, five there. fouls. You got two extra fouls. Bef before we go, I'll let you touch college this rules. puppy, but you're not getting it. Okay. That's all good. I got a couple. I got a few somewhere. I just got to knock the dust off of them, though. You know. But yeah, you got you, a whole bunch of trophies. You you can you can have that one. All right. So if that's, that's this is your claim to fame, clearly, because you every time I run into you, you don't let me forget. No. Every time. Every time you see me. So I, this is no I, time. I, I, I airports, is, early like studios. It doesn't exactly. matter. You're always gonna be reminded, and 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 that's that's exactly what happened in that game. Now I didn't come over here for this. Now, <laughs> Don't walk out. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't walk out. I didn't, I didn't come over here. You thought for this you were mic. just doing a podcast. We're going trip down memory I, lane I, here. I, absolutely. So you're in this season's yeah, season Dancing with the Stars. Dancing with the Stars, the, the 25th season. Um, they've done some unprecedented things. This is the first, they did a couple of things the first time ever with Dancing with the Stars. So this is a special season. So week one, my partner is Cheryl Burke. She's one of the yes. best dancers pro dancers that's been there this is her 20th season dang so we got paired with her i got paired with her bro when i tell you dancing is by far probably like the most hardest thing i've done since playing football bro trust me it is no joke i lost like eight to nine pounds my body aches i'm talking about I understand the shelf life of a dancer is almost equivalent to that of a football player. Because? Because of the workload. You're constantly on your feet. The, the amount of hours and the wear and tear that dancers put on their body, bro, it is, dude, it's second to none. Like, I, I have so much respect for dancers after being on Dancing with the Stars for two months. I lasted, out of 10 weeks, I was on the show eight of 10 weeks. So... And my and we 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 did some behind the scenes stuff. We did some packages for production. Cheryl is on record in saying that after she saw me dance and rehearse the first couple of weeks, the first week or so, she didn't think I would get beyond week three because I'm not a dancer. I have no dance experience. She saw that I was raw green, which is equivalent, almost some parallel to my football career, uh. but. That's how I was with football, even with this dancing. The more that I do something is the better that I get. And I made it eight out of ten weeks. And did you, all this dancing and, and the wear and tear, did it bring up any old football injuries? Oh, dude, my hip flexor, my growing. Dude, you definitely, this is what production needs to start doing, is allowing not only just the celebrities that are on the show. They need to allow 
time for these people to recover and get body maintenance. I'm talking about not even just the celebrities, but the pro dancers as well. Because, dude, I felt bad for my partner because of just the workload that they have. They only not only just teaching us four, five, six hours a day, but they have to choreograph. They have to do. They have to meet with creative. They help with costume, wardrobe, bro. They're, I mean, they're stretched every minute, every hour that they can. And again, the body maintenance you have to have. You know, for an athlete, you got to have time to recover. Even it's just as simple as working out. You can't work out every day. Right. Or you're going to hurt yourself. You got to have a day or two where your body recovers and then you'll be able to perform. But with production TV, they don't think that way. All they think about is production, is producing a good show. Not that it's not. But again, just think about if they really just took time to really care about the individuals that are actually putting on that show and allowing them some time to recover. Bro, trust me, I have so much respect for the dancers uh. and the people that I've been able to associate with my, myself with, with ABC and the network and just the dancers along, even the new friends and uh, the established friendships that I've been able to make within these within these two months. Dude, it was is re- remarkable, just an amazing experience. But you're not in NFL shape right now, but right. It, it got you in shape. Right, exactly. I'm but not, you don't really get out of shape. No, I, I Didn't always, they once say that you had like 4% body fat? I probably had it probably a couple months ago. I when you were doing the dancing. Dancing with stars, bro. I dipped all, my, my weight dipped all the way down to 208 pounds. And I hadn't weighed that since I left college. That was what I entered into the league in 1996. That's what I entered into from the, the dancing. From dancing. But were you still like a month? Like, sti- what are you right, doing? I'm, push-up, sit-ups? No, I'm still toned. But wait, I still how do you mu- do that? What are you doing? What, what are you doing? Mean? How Pull-ups, do I do, how dips, do I do what? You're still toned. Like you still look like you can like you're ready Bro, to go. Bro, my muscles aren't gonna go anywhere. Well, mine went somewhere. I'm well, saying you ooh. never had any, but oh, anyway. Shit, man. I mean, I had muscle tone. You know what I mean? My I had muscle mass. But are we, what like, are we I've doing? even Push-ups? lost. I've even lost some muscle mass. I mean, I from look, the dancing, right? I'm lean. I mean, I'm leaner than when I started. But again, with all the cardio, just the burnt, the, just the physical and the mental challenge and the demand on your body that it has, bro. You're gonna burn. I trust me. If you were to go on a dance with the stars, maybe I should pitch you for dancing with the stars. T- Terrell, let me you, tell I don't you know something. how long you're last. I, I, I you may not be able to nope. lose that many pounds because you may no. be gone week Excuse one. Excuse me. Excuse me. I would lose. I would lose the pounds. The, the problem is, is that. The, the risk factor of of literally me oh, tearing something on live Dancing with the Stars. Well, it's been done before, no, so no, you no. won't be the first. No, no, no. I'm not talking about oh afterwards. I'm talking about during the routine. Exactly. You're not. You're not going to be the first. They've had. They've had. They go down. They've had celebrities that come on. I've heard the stories because in people, front of a million people, people are people have complained about their bodies aching and just the I'm wear. I'm talking about aching. I'm no, saying no, it's no, a I'm, risk. Listen, listen. I'll to sue me. somebody because I can no, tear can, a meniscus, no, 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 break a toe. No, once you sign on that, that, that line, I'm not signing. No, no, we need like I need some like. No, no, it was. A, I can't remember who the female was, but I think she was a. Uh, I think she played volleyball. Somebody that played volleyball, uh, or she was a gymnast. She's a pro athlete. She ended up tearing her Achilles. Because you're getting in different pairs of shoes, and yeah. if you're, and if you're, especially, and if it was a beach volleyball player, I can understand why. Because her feet are used to the sand giving, and now you're on a hard surface where your feet don't give. Where she's been training, and her body is receptive to a certain way of weight distribution all her life. Especially you going, if you've been. Jumping on sand all your life right. for your career. That's your career. And now you take some time. Now you're doing something on a hard surface. Did, your body has to adjust to that. Do and, they do they now when you're doing the thing, when you're when you're doing the bro, show? My feet are even uglier now. My I didn't have pretty feet from the beginning. I'm glad you know that. But trust me, I trust me, I've seen some people, some football players' feet that look like they try and climb trees for a living. So by no means, trust me, my feet. I could have I some. Mo- I have some model toes compared to what I've seen, so you don't want to go there. But like <laughs> I said, me personally, dude, I've had blisters, corns on my feet, everything from dance shoes, bunions. Bro. Now, no bunions. They don't have like special sort of sneaker sort of dance shoes. You're yeah, in yeah. shoe every, shoes with that. With every routine, they have different shoes, a custom that are made for that particular dance. So you came here to to the show. You had a little fruit. 
You're having a fruit. Yeah, snack. yeah, you know, I got to keep it. You know, I'm always going to try to keep myself sexy. I got to keep my body right. Grown and sexy. You know what I mean? So even, like I said, that's why I've always said when people ask me, could I play today? Of course, that's just me. I know who I am. I knew that when I was coming out of high school, going to college, and from college to the pros, people didn't expect me to do what I did. Because of the confidence that I had in myself and the belief in myself, I was able to accomplish more than the expectations of of a lot of people that passed over me. What don't you eat? Um, I eat everything, but I just don't eat everything on a regular basis. Bro, in the with doing dancing with the stars, I just had this conversation before I came over here with one of the one of the uh troop dancers. Troop dancers are one of the, the guys that dance, you know, they're not professional, right. but they but dude, I've eaten more pizza in the last two months than I probably have in my in the Why last pizza? five in the last five five years. Why pizza? Is that what they serve over there? No, because it's good. And I know I can I can I can burn the calories. They're not gonna it's not gonna bother me. And it's good. Okay. Pepperoni pizza. I know it's not New York pizza. Yo, now you need to you come know, to New York. New York pizza. Listen, listen. <laughs> I know it's not New York pizza. I don't know where you're going with that accent. <laughs> but we need to take you because we need to take I know you, about New York pizza. We, I know. we need to take you to like the right slice spot right. in New York. In New York. Opulent. If you aren't familiar with those wine terms, congratulations, you're just like me. Okay, I just want to know, does it taste good? Okay, that's all I want to know. And luckily, I found First Leaf, the only wine club that is based on your tastes. I just received my First Leaf order, and these wines are so good. Try firstleaf.com forward slash Rappaport. This is how it works. Customize your first leaf order by selecting the color, the wine regencies, and the frequency of your wine shipments. First Leaf will then create an introductory three pack of wine to get you started. The I Am Rappaport team of G Moody, last name rhymes with duty, and the Dust Brothers came over for dinner the other night and we enjoyed three, one, two, three of the best bottles of Merlot that I have ever had. With First Leaf's introductory pack, you'll get all three for just five bucks each. Normally these bottles of wine go for $20 each, if not more. And when the bottles arrive, rate the wine to get personalized selections based on your unique tastes. First Leaf is eliminating the middleman, just like the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. We're coming right to you. First Leaf works directly with the world's foremost wineries in France, Italy and in Napa Valley. To order your three pack of introductory wine for just $15, go to tryfirstleaf.com forward slash Rappaport. That's three bottles of wine for only $15. Tryfirstleaf.com slash Rappaport. Basketball. We're going to get to football later. Yeah, I'm you're, a, ba- you're yeah. a basketball fan. Right up my alley right here. All right. So who's your team right now? Like who's, um, your, who's your favorite team in the NBA? I Right now, I don't really have a favorite team. I know that there are a number of teams right now that are playing extremely well. I don't really have teams until the playoffs start. So then Whoa. that's when the playoffs start. Then I have to choose. Okay, but there's a, the full, there's a full slate of games on. Right Let's now, say there's a full slate of games. I, Who are you going to turn well, to first? Is, this is what, I, to get to your point, I have favorite teams that I like to watch, and I have my DVR set to those favorite teams. Oh, you watch the record. game on record too. Exactly. Okay. So those teams are like, I think, Washington Wizards. Okay. The Cavaliers, the Warriors, OKC. I like teams that that have like players that I like watching play. Right. So of those that I mentioned, obviously Russell Westbrook, um, KD, Steph, LeBron. Right. Kyrie. Right. Um, I like what he's doing over there with, with those young Boston Celtics. And I think everybody's feeding off that leadership. Whatever he's garnered over there with the Cavaliers yeah. those years, he's brought that culture over to those young guys. And that confidence. Exactly. And obviously they have a great coach in, um, in what's his name, Stevens? Yeah, Brad Stevens. Brad Stevens. He, he must be 30-something, looks like he's Ex- 15. Exactly. So, again, you think about the youth and what he's bringing. Like, they were they were decent last year. Yeah. But they just needed that, that player with that ick factor, and they got that. They got rid of the it, <laughs> and, get, I, and and speaking it, because he's I, no exactly, joke too. They got rid of the it with Isaiah Thomas, and they brought this guy Kyrie Irving over there, who's doing tremendous. And again, I think he's 
the team has exceeded a lot of people's expectations. Especially with the injury. Based on exactly, that's what I was getting to, with the way the, the season started out losing Gordon Hayward. So, again, you can only really just project the upside of what's going to happen when he comes back next year. Who do you think right now, based on like, – guard, assuming there's no injuries, and we don't want to see anybody injured. Right, nobody injured. Who, who do you think will be the top two teams in the East, top two teams in the West? Ooh-wee. It's going to be tough. That East is going to be tough right now because you got you, – you see how Toronto's playing. You think about Washington. You think about They don't Boston. make me nervous, though, Toronto. They make you nervous? Last year, they let Biombo Bismack get away. Yep. That hurt them. With their defense and their in their boards, that's yep. what hurt them. Offensively, they could have got with it, but he he had a defensive presence that he didn't he didn't back down from LeBron. No, I no. saw those games. Yes, he did not back down from LeBron, and that's what they lacked last year. That's why they didn't advance as far in, in the playoffs. But again, to your point, yeah, they don't really scare you. But you think about those Wizards; they're good. So my two teams, I I would say the Wizards, and I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the Boston Celtics. So the Cavaliers aren't getting to the finals again? I don't I don't see it. I hope they don't. I, I don't see it and I, and I and I say that not a discredit to who LeBron James is because everybody knows he is he is superhuman. He is a he is the best athlete by far to put on a pair of sneakers in that uniform. Because he can play one through five. And that's no discredit. And and, and I'm a MJ and Kobe fan. But this guy is the most athletic basketball player I think that we've ever seen. Like he possesses everything of those two guys that I mentioned, Kobe and and MJ. And you think about Magic Johnson. You think about some of these great players. Carl Malone. He's like Carl Malone with a a full skill set. Exactly. He possesses a lot of skills from a number of basketball players that have played this game before him. So that's why. So that's why I say he's probably like the most athletic and most dominant. I ain't gonna say most dominant, but he's up there with Shaq. Oh yeah. When in terms of dominating the game. Yeah. He, so my two teams out of the East would be probably, like I said, Wizards, Wizards in Boston. And out of uh West, I'm thinking I'm going Golden State. Mm-hmm. Ah, I'm going Golden State. And you you can't sleep on you can't sleep on the Spurs. All right. You can't sleep on All them. right. You just cannot sleep on them. I don't he the Spurs is almost they're they're like the they're like the New England Patriots of football. What do you think of OKC? What, what do you think of this? Now, you you, they, you, you we're are gonna... a polarizing player as a football player. Russell Westbrook is polarizing. Now, I think they're going to get – obviously, they're going to get, get better. better. They're, they're going to get, get better. better. When it comes to playoff time, this is where they're all going to have to be unselfish. And then even when those – sometimes those two or three may not be on. So that's when those other players are going to have to step up. You, you've, uh, you've talked a lot about playing ball, basketball. We joked about the celebrity All Star Game, Big Three, all that stuff. How good when you were when you were in your prime of basketball were you at basketball? Well, I'm, I'm still nice now. Like uh, I'm you, really, I'm nice. You right want now. to get in the Big Three, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm nice right now. Ask Al Harrington. I just played a game the other night in a basketball league out in, Cal- in the Calabasas. And with with who was playing? Al Harrington was the most notable guy, and he had a couple of guys that were ballers on their team. And we have a team called 818. We don't have, like, I'm, like, the most notable guy on our team. Right. But we play with guys that know how to play the game. We beat them 80 to 77. And Fools. It, yeah, full court. And, and as, when I was balling, guess what I was asking Al Harrington? I said, hey, what about that big three action? He was laughing. After the game, he goes, hey, I'm going to send a message to Cube. I had 21. Now you got it. You know the this, big three. I'm the I'm the roving reporter. I know it's good. I know I, they're very physical. He he told me during the, the game. I'm at the free throw line, and I'm across. I'm across from from Al, and one of my buddies was at the free throw line, and I'm and I mean, I'm balling out. So I'm like yo. I'm like Al. What's up with that big three action? He mm-hmm. started he laughing at me. This was at the beginning of the game. I'm still ball, I'm starting to ball out. I hit a three, a couple threes. I'm dishing dimes. You know what I mean? I'm like the LeBron on our team. I'm like, I'm being okay. very versatile. I'm in the post. I'm out on the wing. I'm in transition. I'm making stuff happen. We at the free throw line. I said, big I said, hey, what's up with that big three action? He's laughing. Now he goes, I, I, you know what? I might have to call Cube and put a put a call. You gotta come to, to the combine. Cause no 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 that's cool that's the cool. The combine is this. There last year there was I think 75, 85 players, real dudes that wanted to play. 
but real. They don't, I understand that, but they don't offer the cachet that I'm bringing. I understand those guys. But you got, they got to see what you got. I, you got to see if you get drafted word, on a word, team. Word of mouth. Like Rashad McCants, all those guys, they've seen me play. I, and I understand. Like if they said, say if, come to the combine, are you going to come to the if combine? I, if I need to come to the combine. You have to come to the combine because they already want I pro. Need, I get that. But word of mouth, sometimes that's, that's all it, it needs to be said. People know that I can play. No, I can play absolutely. The, I can play the game. But you still have to come to the combine. You okay, gotta, if yeah, if if that's what it needs. But these, are you are you willing to come this, to the check combine? This out. I, I got are you trying to sell? Is this a business or what you're trying to do? Is it, this business or what? What, what are we doing? I'm here? there for the competitive spirit. Is, I'm the is, is it just report. competition, or you are? Are they trying to really establish a business here? Cube handles I'm the business look, exactly. I'm thinking from the business perspective. I got that. I got People that. People are going to want to see. Just because I'm there, I'm offering a lot more cachet than some some dude that may have played in college or overseas. But what if that dude who played in college overseas is like well, he's better than To, and he's like, "Yo, come he out." He may be better, but nobody don't know him though. So, but, but you, we gotta no, see you come to the combine. Nobody knows him. Are you nervous about the combine? No. What what is what am I be nervous about? We run a couple of drills. We do three on threes. They're gonna see if you're in shape. Who knows if you're in that's, shape? I mean, you look right. fantastic. That's fine. Yeah, of course. I'm saying at this point, To, at this point, To, we don't know what you could do. I'm I'm saying you're saying you play with a higher. Maybe we go out and say me and you have a hundred yard dash. Are you, can you beat me now? Me, Michael Rapport, hundred yard dash. I locked you up in a celebrity game seven even, years ago. I can't even believe you even asked that. Hundred yard dash. I can't even believe you. That's even coming out your. Okay, mouth. fine, fine. So I'm gonna make sure we say. Listen, I personally think To should be able to come to the comics, a professional, high level, elite athlete. That's fine. We yeah. see what you got. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, because the physicality of course you're a football player, so we know you. We know you could take the physicality. Yeah, I mean, tr trust me. It they let a lot go on in three on three than they will in a regular, real NBA game. Yes, the, they, you, they, they let, the, it's almost like street ball. They toned with it some down. Moves. They yeah. toned it down. You know what? I, I in the beginning, no bull crap. I thought big three. I was like, yo, there's gonna be a fight, but right. they 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 made the rules where it's you can hand check, but you can't. Body check, right? Like, so yeah. they, they they took it. I saw the Are you nervous I about the physicality? Because no, now the, I seem like maybe you're nervous no, 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 just no, no, about no, no, the physicality no, no. in general. I, I saw the champ. I was there at the championship game in Las Vegas. That's I right. Saw, I saw you there. I saw. Trust me, dude. I saw. It was a lot of bumping and grinding. They were, that, over yes, they were. It was a lot. But are you of, nervous about this? Like, you, man, you're a dark skin brother, was, and I see you blushing a little bit. Like hey, the, the physicality hey, making you nervous. Hey, let me tell you something. It was a lot of bumping and grinding going on. Yes, a little bit more than R. Kelly than. Oh, yes. W would be a, they, yes. They were bumping and grinding. To. Definitely more than R. Kelly. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, I would love to see you to see you be a part of the big three. I could tell you something about the big three. What's that? As far listen, I'm not a player, but I was there. But the thing that was the best thing about it, and you would enjoy this, those guys had so much fun. No, no, no. I saw that. It was I mean so much fun. Just the atmosphere. It's different watching it in person versus watching it on TV. Right. Like again, like I said, there were like I said, I I saw the big three, I, I I know when it started, so I recorded some of the games, and then when I saw it in person, it gave me a whole different perspective on how physical the game yeah. is in person because you can't really tell watching it from TV. Do you think – I want to hear your opinion on this. Obviously, you, you, you can't make for sure – I don't think this game will ever happen, but I, I would love to see it. As a basketball fan – because of the Lonzo Ball factor last summer league in the NBA, mm -hmm. there was so much hype, hype on NBA summer league basketball. And, you know, we could sit here and sound like, oh, old school, old school, old school. But the NBA itself, the regular season, especially here we are in, 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 in the early part of the season in November, the defense is so lackluster. But the NBA summer league was pathetic. And I said... If you took the best dudes from the big three, let them get in shape, took the best dudes from the NBA Summer League, who would win? Based on what you know. The big three. I agree. Big three. I agree. Because my thing is, too, obviously with knowing that Alon Alonzo Ball won the MVP of Summer League and seeing how he's playing now. Right. It doesn't add up. Well, what do you think of the whole the whole thing of him um, in terms of what his father did? Because I right now I think he's put he's put him put his son in a difficult situation, I agree. and I think now his son is second guessing himself probably as a basketball player and what he can offer because now he's listening to it. If you're an athlete, you're gonna listen to the critics. You're gonna listen to what people say about you, whether it's good or bad, whether you want to or not. And I don't really think he's really playing up to his potential. 
you know, because there's there's been so much hoopla around his dad and him pumping him up. And then now with the latest incident, you know, his, his brother going over to China, you know, get caught stealing. That's a lot for the ball family to be having right now. And then they were doing the whole, you know, uh, balling, balling family, whatever right. reality show. That's a lot to a lot for a kid. At that age, there's a lot on his plate. And so I don't really think he's really playing up to his potential because of all the extracurricular that his dad had provided. I, I agree. And, and, you know, I've talked a lot about LeVar. And, I, you know, and, and I, you know, I talked my smack, but I was like, at this point, I'm like, yo. I mean, you know what? The father did it. The father did it. Yeah, and, he and, put and, that bulls down on his and back. And I don't know what he thought he was going to come in and the NBA from and the dominate game, the NBA. From the game, the first game where you saw when they played the Beverly. Clippers. Patrick Beverly. That's what guys are going to be doing now. They're going to be gunning for him. So LeVar, he's, he's going to fold, he's going to tank, or he's going to have to grow up real fast. Yeah. Otherwise, again, they're going to kill his confidence. They're yeah. going to take his confidence from him. And that's either, like I said, I don't know if he has that Kobe mentality. I don't see it at this very moment. Maybe it's going to click at some point. But I know that if, 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 if being that what we witnessed with Kobe, if that's Kobe, Kobe is going into the lab. Whatever he's doing, he's going into that mentality. Oh, yeah. That's he's a diff- going into some part of his psyche, and he's not going to tolerate guys coming at him every night. At some point, you're going to have to ball up. You're going to have to put your jock strap on and, and be ready to ball. Right. I agree. I agree. I, I, it's, you know what the crazy thing is? The thing that happened with his brother, it would have been a blip. It wouldn't have been a national news story had it not been – if it had been any other rookie, right. it could have been De'Aaron Fox's brother. It could have right. been – but anyway, it would have been like so-and-so's brother. But because but that, of the father, it became literally front-page news. That's that's what comes with you having a name or you being a celebrity, not even just basketball, but when you have a posse, when you with a group of people, it will be like if you and your homies went out somewhere – and you guys got in a brawl down the street at at the Seven Eleven, mm-hmm. or your boy stole something. Mm-hmm. It ain't gonna be your boy stole something. It's Michael Rappaport stole mm-hmm. something. Mm-hmm. When I when I heard about it, it was LiAngelo Ball, blah blah, and these other two kids. I didn't even know who the other two kids were. No, because all they all they the main person notified or you know named was LiAngelo Ball. Yeah, it's crazy. Based on all the hoopla and the bullseye, just. Him blasting this ball, this ball, that big ball of brand. He is basically doing a disservice really to his son by bringing all this unwanted and unnecessary attention, you know, to the family. Now, when when you were in your prime in the NFL, there wasn't the social media like there right, is today. And right as I was it, leaving, that's when, you know, we had MySpace and then we But had nothing Twitter, like this. But nothing. You would have been a hashtag. You would have been you would have broke Twitter a couple of times. What? You almost broke Twitter before Twitter. What? With with your stuff. Now Oh my God. I'm, you can imagine when I went to the Dallas Star. They, what, that would have been the, like Kim Kardashian's ass. Right. With you'd have broke Twitter. With the social media platforms that we have now, in addition to MySpace and Twitter, we have Snapchat, we got Instagram, we got everything. You can, dude. You were ahead of the curb and sort of branding yourself. But one of the things that I was always fascinated about your career was the first time you, you, because I'm, I'm a Giants fan, right? Mm-hmm. So the first time I really paid attention to you and like saw you and like you, I, I knew you were good. Your, your, it was your rookie season, I believe, the catch against Green Bay. Right? right. Yeah, that was my. That, it wasn't my rookie. That was like my third year in the league. It was your third. Early, it was early. Yep, yeah, my third year in the league. But that that year catch three. it was in the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. And it was John Madden was calling the game, and you were so emotional, and like John Madden and Pat Summerall. And and I remember the they were like, break. "This is what it's all about," because you were like, you were crying, genuine tears, like, and it wasn't it it wasn't any showboating. Like it was like, I remember being like, "Yo, this guy." This is what I remember Madden saying, this is what it's all about. And I remember being like, this, I was just like, I was like, I like this guy. I like this guy, T.O. And then after that, it was like, there was no more, ever, there was never any more crying. There was never any more sort of no, like, outward show of humility. Was that conscious? Did that change? Like, were like, no, I was always the same person. What you saw was a, a real genuine spirit. That was me really just. Feeling the emotion because earlier on, early in the game, the game, I had basically I let the team down. You dropped a few passes. I've all, like, I'm a team guy. Whether people saw that or they heard that or not, 
I've always been a team guy. And I'll say that to the day that I die, based on media portrayal, people had an understanding of me that I was selfish, I was arrogant, and I was cocky. Outside of those lines, bro, I'm a human being. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how I was raised. You know what I mean? So for me, I knew what I had invested, you know, during the course of the offseason to be put in a position to make plays and help my team win. Mm -hmm. So I felt a big, huge letdown when I didn't come through. Mm -hmm. So that was just really a sigh and a relief of emotion right. when I caught that ball because it, up until this point, I had stunk up the game. I was literally the GOAT in a negative sense of the game. It wasn't the great. I was a GOAT of the game at this point in time. So that was that ex show and that expression of emotion that my team really meant something to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what people saw. Even after that, like I said, I mean, I still, like I showed emotion when I was in Dallas. This was what year, what, nine or 10? Was that, were you nine, 10 years nine in the league? Nine or 10, when I basically, I went to Tony's, Tony Romo's defense because right. the media blamed him for going on vacation with Jessica right, Simpson right, right. right before the playoffs. And I was hurt and I came back and they blamed the loss on Romo because he took some days off right, and went on vacation. Right. And at the end of the day, even if it was you, Mike, you're my teammate. I'm going to go to bat for you. You're my brother. It doesn't matter. That's how I felt. So if you, somebody's attacking you, you're attacking me. Mm -hmm. So then it wasn't, it wasn't a conscious effort to do something just, just to put me in a, in a good light, bro. That was me coming from a real genuine, real place because in the NFL, that's what got some guys, they get up and they say, we're a family. It's a brotherhood. I truly meant that. Mm -hmm. So we're in the locker room, we're sharing, you know, a number of days and hours and a season together, then we're all in it together. So if we win together, we lose together. So I didn't take too kindly to the the media trying to point out uh, point the loss and put it on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Although when you are a quarterback, you have to be able to shoulder that. But at that point in time, I felt like I was a leader on our team as well. Even though I wasn't the quarterback, there were things that I possibly felt like I could have done better. But I was just coming off an injury. I rehabbed myself back just so I could play in that game. When I don't know what the score was, but we had an opportunity to win the game and we lost. And I didn't like the fact that the media was trying to blame it on the fact that he went, which was some weeks ago. Right. It doesn't matter. As long as you come, you you show up. Again, we win as a team and we lose as a team. Did you like? I mean, when you talk about leadership, when you look back at your career, what is a good leader? Like straight up, like when you look back at you, like they say To's team, or they say Tony Romo's team, or they say Cam Newton's team, whoever it is, or they say Russell Westbrook's team, or he's the leader. He's not a good leader. Kyrie right. is too quiet to be a leader. Lonzo Ball. The, what what is a leader of a football team like? What, what is what and, well, and who are the leaders that you've played played with and when did you become a leader? Well, I think certain certain positions dictate leadership because they garner so much responsibility and with responsibility, whether you win or lose in your action, you have to be accountable for those. So when you think of a quarterback or a point guard or a certain star on a team, then there's a lot of responsibilities that come with that. And some people, they adapt well to it. They, they embrace it and some don't. Um, you think about guys like Kobe or mm -hmm. Shaq. These are these are leaders. They led in their own little ways. Mm -hmm. We don't know what they're like in practices or you know behind the camera. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We're not exposed to their everyday you know practice habits of how a person may lead. Me personally, I I wasn't that I wasn't vocal. Um, I see a lot of people be like, "You weren't vocal. You always talk shit. You you right. you, you, you never that, shot away." But, but as was, a player, you weren't vocal. I was passionate. You saw that was that was passion that was being being shown you know on the sidelines or it was only when it was it was really only on the sidelines if you think about it i never really talked a lot of trash in between the lines you're you that's not your thing no dude i i've i've done that and i've tried to do that and i was so gassed i was like i can't do this the whole entire game you mean you got tired yeah i got just tired trying to play the game and jaw back and forth with somebody i almost passed out trying to do that one game so i had i got i got so overexerted that i was like no this this is i can't do this ken norton was good at it because he practiced he did it in practice and he did it in the game and i tried to talk trash to some guys during like the, like the first couple of minutes dude i was gassed i had to tap myself like give me a breather but back to your point when That's you think funny. about leaders like i led by example understanding that certain guys are put in positions to lead Gotcha. Especially when you talk about quarterbacks and, you know, stars of the team, people that handle the ball, you know, like point guards. 
Guys that are looked to rise up, rise to the occasion when they're counting on you. These are guys that are put in position to lead. And it's up to that individual as to whether they embrace that or not. When you think about it, I just saw something about KD did something, I guess, I don't know, it was Players Tribune or something, and he was saying that he's not a leader. He almost kind of reminds me of when Charles Barkley said he's not a role model. Mm. You're in this position, you're in a position to lead. And he said he felt he feels uncomfortable. Being a leader, telling people to follow behind me, follow mm-hmm. suit. Mm-hmm. And I don't have a problem with that because the thing is- You don't have a problem with what he said? Yeah, I don't have a problem with that because he leads by example. And there's enough guys on that team to shoulder that leadership. You think that about- That outward Dr- leadership. Exactly. You think about Draymond, not only Steph, who's the star of the team. You think about, and it's been said, Andre Iguodala. Yep. He's that father figure. Right. He holds things together. There are people there. He doesn't have to- he doesn't have to shoulder the load of being a leader. Right. And I think in, in OKC, I don't know what it was like in o- OKC, but you can see that there was there was something missing. There was there was a disconnect with him, maybe coaching, management, or whatever, or maybe it was a disconnect with him and Russ as who's the leader of the team. Mm-hmm. But when you have people that embrace the moment, and you're going to see it coming going into the playoffs, we, we just mentioned, alluded to OKC and Carmelo, Russell, Paul George. You're gonna see when they get deep into the playoffs how how unselfish are it. However, however far they go will depend on how unselfish those guys. I are. I agree. In your career, who would you say are the best leaders that you played with on your teams? Whether it was defensively, or, like where you were like, that's a fucking guy like um, that that could most, rally the troops. Most notably, coming right off my head, I'm thinking Philadelphia Eagles. I'm thinking that team. I'm thinking Brian Dawkins. Okay. I'm thinking Brian Dawkins. And there are guys that are put in position to lead, and sometimes they just they fake the funk. You know what I mean? And I'm not really too keen on guys like that. Don't do it when you know eyes are on you. Do it when you're not supposed to be, you know, when 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 you're accounted, when you're counted on by your teammates, don't just do it because somebody's watching or you, you know, somebody you somebody's expecting you to do certain things. Mm-hmm. If you're a leader, it's gonna come off genuine, it's mm-hmm. gonna come off authentic. That's what real leaders do. Does it? Does a good quarterback have to be someone who's vocal? No, not at all. Who I mean, who is, I, who is I, a I, not I, vocal I'm, quarterback? I'm gonna give you an example. I don't think like for example, a, a good quarterback that I feel like that's that wasn't vocal is Kurt Warner. You know what I mean? He seems like a quiet guy, but I think he led by example. You know what I mean? And I think the way that he carried himself. Like calm. Right. And people saw that. Even just the way that he lived his life, I think people respect that. Mm-hmm. That's sort of like a, the, the sign of a leader. I think when you can gravitate to someone and, and you see that there's a level of success that they're having, then you look to that person as a leader. You go, mm-hmm. man, I want to, that's how I want to be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I want to follow those same footsteps. You know, you have people that learn from their their mistakes and no, nobody's perfect by any means. Um, I think another leader would be, I mean, when, even with the Niners, I would have to say um, Merton Hanks uh-huh. um, or, or Steve Young. Steve, what? Steve wasn't vocal. Most of the defensive guys on our team at that time, those were the vocal guys um, like Ken Norton, yep. um, Dana Stubberfield, okay. you know, guys of that nature. Um, offensively, like I said, you know, Steve didn't really say a whole lot. I mean, I think you think about Jerry Rice and Steve Young, those guys, their actions spoke louder than words right now i I hear you because because i think a lot of times when we think as a fan and me you know i like i talk a lot but like you think the leader has to be the guy who talks the most who's the loudest or who's like come on let's go let's go and you're saying sometimes the come on let's go let's go guy it's 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 not necessarily uh it's not really real right yeah i mean some guys it's like they call it false enthusiasm you know right, I mean? right, right. That false leadership. Don't just you. do it day of the game. I got you. Or just because. I mean, a leader is going to lead you through through every facet uh, of the season. You know what I mean? Practice, you know, outside of practice. I mean, you'll see it. You know what I mean? They embody um, or possess what a leader is supposed to be about. Listen, you want to be a hero? Do you want to be a hero? With DKMS, you can actually be a hero. Every three minutes. Someone in the United States is diagnosed with a blood disease and every nine minutes, someone dies. You can change that. I can change that. Young men 
are the most desired donors with 14,000 patients a year that need transplants in the United States from a total stranger who is their genetic match. Okay, that match could be you. Go to DKMS.org to order your free swab kit. Swab your cheeks and return the kit to DKMS to get on the bone marrow registry and see if you are a match. You can save someone's life for free. It's a good thing. I'm doing it. G Moody's doing it. The Dust Brothers, Miles Davis and Jordan Winter are doing it. And you should do it too. If you get a call from DKMS, say yes. Okay? Your life will be changed forever while you're literally, literally giving someone else a second chance at their life. Text Barstool, B-A-R-S-T-O-O-L, to 5055 for more information. Again, text Barstool, B-A-R-S-T-O-O-L, to 50555. This is a simple, free way to save another person's life. No bullshit. What do you think of the league this year so far? Celebrations. They're they're letting the dudes like it's like oh you and God. Chad and, and so there's some crazy. other you guys set it off and then they took it away. Right. But these were old school guys that were analysts, calling commentators or whatever. They were they were commentating on the games. These are old school guys that basically said that we were disgraced to the game. You know Billy White Shoes Johnson was Right, but again, whatever I the icky shuffle. My celebration wasn't distasteful or tinkered with the integrity of the game. I agree. Everything that I did, I tried to literally just I tried to have fun, bring a level or a sense of of entertainment to the game. Once I started to realize my skill set and really just really just know that I was able to perform and really produce for my team, then. Once I scored it, I did something great. That's when I started to think about really kind of like not really branding myself, but bringing an element of entertainment, really, really performing to what people come to the stands for and pay their hard money for. Not just to watch us throw the ball around, score, but they want to see another layer of, of excitement. And that's what I tried to bring with my touchdown celebration. I, I agree. And, and you know, you said, you know, the thing that you just said was interesting because you said once you realized that your skill was at a certain level, you were like comfortable enough to, to have more fun. Like right. you were coming up to celebrate. Dudes now in football and basketball, which are my two sports, Everybody, and a lot of it has to do with this Instagram shit. Social they, media, yeah. They, they come in with 5 million followers, and they think, oh, that's going to make a goddamn difference when you're a professional athlete. And it's almost like putting a cart before the horse. Don't think you have, just like you said, million, two million We all million got a million followers. Followers, that that's going to translate to your level of success on the football field. Because Instagram, though, so that ain't paying your bills. That is not paying your bills. Instagram ain't getting you open on that slant route. Absolutely not. And that's where I think a lot of guys, and I think you're basically touching on it, where a lot of guys, they're they're not prioritizing really what they're in the National Football League for. That's That fame, that extra stuff, social media, that's going to come. But you got to be able to produce. It's going to come if you're, if you're right, at if that you're, level. Right. You can't force it down everyone's throat. Right. You got to be able to produce on that football field. And for me, the fear of just not making it that's what enabled me to really try to get myself better as a receiver. You had that fear when you first got in right, the league? Dude, I didn't want, number one, I got drafted third third round, 89th pick. After I got in the league my first couple of years, and after I saw a couple of top draft picks get cut, I knew that I was no different. Mm. I'm, I'm in the third round, so I'm definitely just as expendable. Mm. So, But I was drafted, and at the position that I was – Knowing that they drafted me on potential, a lot of the measurables, I had the height, the size. That's why the San Francisco drafted me because that was what they drafted in terms of their receiving core. They drafted tall, lanky, you know, big receivers. And it was up to me to really better myself to give them what they drafted, what they invested in. So so you're cool. You're happy. I'm having fun with it, the, the celebrations this season. Yeah, I mean, some are a little over, over the top. Who, what have are, you liked so far? Some are a little give, corny. A, give, a, give a critique as, well, as an OG are, cel- some celebrator. Some are a little corny. If you follow me on Instagram, I, I saw I saw uh, in the CFL, the Ottawa Red Blacks, 
they did a touchdown celebration at the limbo. That was creative. That was crazy. That was crazy creative. That's what I like to see. You know, some of the stuff like sack and potato race, come on, it's a little corny. I mean, but I get it. I understand this camaraderie. Guys are, you know, getting together. They're celebrating together. It's fun. But again, like I said, it's all about creativity. Right. You know what I mean? And and if I was playing, there's no telling what I would be doing. Because like I said, my oh, wheels. Oh, you'd be, you'd be on another wheels, level right, right now. Right. My wheels would be turning. Like I would try to outdo myself. I would try to <laughs> one up my celebration week to week. When When you were going through all the scrutiny, in Dallas and the holdout and, you know, and then the, 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 the sit-ups and, like, were you ever going, like, things had gotten too far? Sometimes, like, I'll do things and I'll go, uh-oh. You know, like, you don't want to take it. That might be a lot of times for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see some of the stuff you, you post and, and I'm like, what? Did he just say that? Is he really saying this right I'm now? I'm saying it. I'm but, like, how is this guy surviving? This guy got to walk, walk around with a with a bodyguard. He can't say that. <laughs> but did you like? Did you ever feel like shit? No, no, this, no. This I, got this, out of hand. This is when I realized that I my my football status had really gotten on another level. Um, I didn't hold out, but there was a situation where when I was with Philly, I was in training camp, and coach sent me home. Uh, sent me home off for of what? I think it was a disagreement about something. You and the coach had a disagreement? Yeah, yeah we had a disagreement. Is it like a football disagreement or like why are you wearing, you know, blue and green no, on no, the no. same I'm day? No, no, no. I'm going to give you the scenario. I, I had missed a couple of practices because of a groin issue. Right. They knew of my groin issue, which was chronic, <laughs> prior to coming from, from, from San Francisco. Right. I had, I had hernia surgery. Or right, what right. Happened. And so when I got with the, the Eagles... Andy Reid, like he's one of the, he's the best coach that I've ever had, by the way. Why? Okay, finish. finish I'll ask he's the best coach. But he, it was like having a, like me with the Eagles, it was like him getting a Christmas toy, having me with that. So he basically almost ran me back into the surgery mm. because my body couldn't recover as much as he wanted me. He wanted me on every play. And you wanted to be there for him. This is what happened. I was in training camp. It got to a point that I almost re-injured my, myself because I was running every play. I wasn't able to recover. He was basically running me into the ground. Mm. And so it got to the point that I, I ended up having uh, to take some days off to rehab. So during the time that I was supposed to be rehabbing, every different day, they have positions to go out and sign autograph for the fans. And so on this particular day, I was doing rehab and I needed to rehab my groin, but he wanted me to go out and sign autographs for the fans. Coach. Yeah, the coach did. So my thing was, look, my health is more important, not to shun the fans. Right. But I'm like, yo, I, and I'm sure my fans would appreciate the fact that I'm trying to get healthy and get back on the field so we can try to get back to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But there was a disagreement. He wanted me to go sign autographs, and I wanted to go to the training room to rehab. And so we got into a shouting match right there in front of everybody. And I was like, look, my health is more important than going out signing some autographs. Right, right. I can sign some autographs at any, any I got time. You. I got that you. That was my mindset. Right. But he felt like because we had that disagreement right there in front of it that I was being insubordinate and I was talking. But I'm like, no, I'm like, we could have talked like grown men. But I understand where I'm coming from. Like, dude. I think this this was the second year. I had just come off the Super Bowl. I had basically risked my my health playing in the Super Bowl with two screws and a plate, signed a waiver to do that. So I'm like, okay, I know what's more important to me, my health. Right. And so that's where the disagreement happened. And so it was also stemming that going into the training camp, we were talking about possibly holding out because I felt like I, was, I should have been paid more right. based on what I had done in the Super Bowl prior. So there was a little tension in that. So that's where, again, he basically suspended me. He basically told me to go home. So to your point, I know I'm a little long-winded. No, no, no. It's good. I get sent home. by the time, And I'm like, I don't know, I'm maybe an hour or so away from, from Lehigh to Philly to Morristown where I live. I, I didn't even, it didn't even dawn on me. I got my stuff, went to my room, got my stuff, drove home. I'm at my, I get to my house. I don't know how much time passed by. And the next thing you know, I, I'm in my house, but I hear helicopters, but I don't think nothing of it. I hear the helicopter. Then all of a sudden, I hear a knock at my door, my doorbell ring. So I look out the window. Dude, I see news trucks posted up outside my house. 
that's when I knew, bro, I was becoming a rock star right before my eyes, more than probably than I anticipated. So when everybody saw the sit-ups in the in the driveway, I literally didn't know how to react or respond to everything. So I just tried to have fun with it. That's why I made the joke. It was like, you know, it was like, what are you gonna do while the team is 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 practicing? I said, well, you know, he told me to work out, so I was doing abs. I'm like, oh, so I'm I'm doing what he asked me to do, so I'm right. working out. Right. So that was me trying to make light of a situation that I really wasn't prepared for. I got you. I got you. I and and you know what? I said this before. Who you are to me, and the first time I met you after uh, the celebrity game, uh, which I shut you down, I remember this clearly. <laughs> and, and this is closer to the time when you were playing and there was all this stuff around you. But I remember I saw you in the lobby of a hotel early morning at that NBA weekend. And, and you were with my kids. And I actually said, I got to go to the bathroom. And you said, you can leave them here. They're good. And you came back. They were just chit-chatting with you. They knew who you were, but they were young. Right. But like you could... I always just like, this is a good dude. And and going back to that Green Bay catch and that emotion, right. I always felt like, I wanted to be like, yo, man, let them see who you are. Because I felt like it, it was like, your your persona at the time got in the way of the good dude. Like, and people were like, he's arrogant, he's this, right, he's right. all that stuff. And I always remember being like, I want... Right, I, but, I, that, I, but that's the thing, when people misinterpret... The train is going though so fast. Right, exactly. And so people jumped on that train that I was a bad guy, that I was arrogant. They knew nothing about me. They knew nothing about how I was raised. How, how raised did you me. come up? Where did you come up? Um, Alexander City, Alabama. My grandmother raised me um, again. What is know, Alexander City, Alabama like? I mean, it's literally black and white. When I tell you, like, literally, like, there was, there's no diversity. Literally, I grew up in a town where it was nothing but black people and white people. So... That's how I was raised, and so my grandmother, she she grew up in a time where her 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 mom and dad and her family members they picked cotton. So these are that's how we were raised. You know, she was raised very very strict. So guess what? That's how she raised us. And so again, I know for a fact that I'm not I'm not a bad person. I'm not a bad. My character is intact. And you think about and I and I even I just had this conversation just the other day, other day with, with 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 some people. Even you think about Donovan and people like that when they've put them on a pedestal and they put them on uh, and they think very highly of them. And then all of a sudden they're out of the game and then their true colors really show up. You know, he had not to bring it up, but he's had DUI. You think about Warren Sapp, you know, domestic violence. These are people that people adored. They thought very highly of when they played the game. But I was viewed very differently. You would have thought I was a thug. Right. You would have thought I grew up in 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 the roughest streets in 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 LA or in, in New York. You would have thought I came from that type of background right. based on what people were saying about me and the information that they were giving about me. But like I said, that's why I've always been able to hold my head high and understand that at the end of the day, only God can really judge me. And so that's really how I've really kind of carried my life and understanding that when, and it's hard for me, I've tried to defend myself, but I have come to grips with myself to, to know that when someone has a committed understanding of, of who you are, then that's who they think you are. Right. There's no need to, you're wasting your breath trying to convince or prove yourself to someone. Right. So at the end of the day, when I look back, the times that like since I've been out of the league, there's been no issues. Right. That's a credit to really how my grandmother raised me, how I was raised, and really a credit to who I am as a person. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you, you're misunderstood, but but also like and it, not misunderstood, but I just always was like, this is a good dude. Like, I always got the <laughs> wink, wink, and I always got, I just felt like shit got, it, like you're saying, you get home, there's helicopters out there. Like, there's no, there's no manual for that. Right. There's no, we're not working out in the there's gym preparing no, for yeah. that. What like, do it just I started do when this, what and do it wasn't I do like you, this? Were, you weren't hiding from the attention. No, I, I, again, I started to embrace it. And some of it, like I said, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I've made mistakes along the way. There were, I made some poor choices. Right. I wish I could have, and it was, and, and again, it was really everything that I did or didn't do. It's not a crutch or it's not me just saying this, but a lot of it was due to how I was raised I got and you. how I was brought up or the lack of. I was raised in a family, you know, uh, with two women, my mom and my grandmother. I didn't have a dad. I didn't have a father figure. You know what I mean? So some of those things were basically a result of that. Uh-huh. All 
All right, Tio, that's good stuff. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> now, nah, because I tell you, you probably don't remember because you were just dim, but I always remember you seeing with my kids, and I was I ran, and just when you came back, they were playing with like they were like jumping on you or something. But I was like, you could tell what a dude is like, you know what I mean? But again, that but then again, that's how I know how that's how media is. The media is they they they're there to serve a purpose. Some of it's good, but a lot of it is negative negativity sales and that's what a yeah, lot true. America gravitates when something bad happens it's true very seldom will they do something where it's heartfelt unless there's a PR strategy behind it and again I didn't really do a lot of things for PR like dude I've done a lot of great things you know unbeknownst to a lot of people <laughs> right you know I've donated money I've done bro I've I donated one of my game checks when uh what with the tsunami hit I was yeah, with, yeah. I was with uh, the the Eagles at the time Nobody knew that. I donated one of my game checks, which was over a hundred grand. Uh, but nobody knew that. Right. Like I've done stuff for the homeless, bro. I I know who I am as a person. So again, I understand too how media would well, they will mislead, you know, their audience. Do people think like if you, when was the last time you saw Donovan McNab McNabb? Um, I don't know when the last time I saw him physically. Maybe it maybe it might have been last year at the Super Bowl, if I'm not mistaken. Are you guys cool or is it like cool? No, like bro, cool? I'm cool. Like I understand like what went down in that sit in that situation, bro. Whether there was jealousy or there was envy there on his behalf, only he he got to he got he got to live with that. Right. By no means were I ever jealous of him or I hated him. You know, for for whatever reason. You know, it got to a point where I disliked some of his actions. You know, again, like I said, in terms of leader, when it came to the to the Eagles, he wouldn't be one of those guys. Uh -huh. You know, that, and that's why I mentioned Brian Dawkins. He was sort of like the heartbeat of that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And again, he felt like he had the lead because he was a quarterback of the team, but uh -huh. that doesn't make you a leader. I got you. You know what I mean? Your actions speak louder than words. So like I said, I was there to witness and saw how he was on and off the field. I got you. So a lot of people that speculate, and again, there was TMZ just, you know, cornered me the other day, and they asked me about who would I take, you know, Wentz or or Donovan, and I said Wentz, and I said it tongue in cheek, but at the end of the day, there are people still upset about me because I said that, but I know who I am. I know what I witnessed the year and seven games that I was there, so I base my answer on that, and so they don't know that they don't. They weren't privy to everything that was happening during those years that I was there. They're only going by hearsay and what was written in the papers. Who is the quarterback that you played with, even if in a Pro Bowl, that had the best thrower to a wide receiver? Who I played with, like mm -hmm. I'm saying, like who's the best football Pro thrower? Bowl. Um. I would have loved to have caught a pass or, you know, played with Peyton Manning or or, or Tom Brady, um, for that matter, um, or even a Drew Brees. I don't think we were at mm. the Pro Bowl at the same time. Um, but the guys that I know that I played with that threw nice balls, everybody always asks me who's the best quarterback that I played with. And I say this for a number of reasons. Ryan Fitzpatrick, I know his career's been up and down, but when I played with him in, in Buffalo, mm. he, like – there was a time where I wasn't even getting a ball thrown to me based on inexperience of Trent Edwards, who was the court starting quarterback at that time. And once he, once Trent got hurt and Ryan Fitzpatrick got the quarterback position, I was, I was able to flourish in which the reason of why they brought me there. Understanding that Lee Evans was the leading receiver prior to me getting there for however many years till he had been there. The same situation when I went to Cincinnati Bengals with Carson and Chad Johnson. Uh huh. They had been playing, what, eight, like eight to ten years together? Chad had been leading receiver every year. But why is it I come over there, maybe a month of training camp, go into the season, and I end up even missing a couple of games toward the end of the season, I end up being the leading receiver. Why is that? Because of what I brought to the game, my intangibles. I was one of those guys. What are intangibles when, when you say for when a wide receiver? Intangible. When you when you hear guys talk about that it factor, it's something about me when it's game time. It's one way to practice. I practiced the way that I I played the way that I practiced. Did you? I practiced hard. I knew that I had to duplicate and put in my mind game type situations uh -huh. in practice so when i was faced with it and again most of my when i had drops it was because i had already played the game before i played it and i was trying to go without the ball 
So most of my drops was because of that, because I wanted to do something with it. I wanted to do uh, I wanted to do something spectacular because I knew I had the skill set anywhere on the football field at any given time. When the ball is in my hand, I know I can do something with it. And every team that I played on, or they asked me to, or they traded for me, whatever the case may be, they knew that I was a playmaker, a game changer. So when I was with Buffalo. And I didn't play so well with Trent because he was inexperienced. He was going to people that he was comfortable with, and that was Lee Evans for uh-huh. however many years. But when I got with Trent Edwards, I ended up being the leading receiver, and I didn't even really get the ball. What do you mean with balls. Fitz? What, yeah, that's what I mean. When I was with Fitz, Fitzpatrick, yep. I wasn't even – dude, my stats weren't even – they were shitty. So you, but you would say that that would be the quarterback that you, he he and Tony Romo throws throw some nice balls. Okay, all right, that's fair enough. When when you think back to the beginning of your career, you work your ass off high school, you work your ass off college, you get drafted late in the third round. When you first got on an NFL field, what was that oh shit moment? Like whether whether you were lining up against somebody, or you were just like. Like, what was the thing that you say, like, the um, first time that you were actually out there? Like, you know, I asked Muggsy Bogues this question in basketball because, right. I, you know, like, you guys dream, you know, and then you make it there. And he said, my first game, I was out there with Magic Johnson, and I had to guard Magic, and then Magic looked over at me. He's 6'9", I'm 5'3", and he just chuckled, and he goes, I never forgot that. What was that moment where um, you were like... I think it was preseason. I think we may have been... I think one of our first preseason games, I think it may have been, been San Diego or whatever, and I just realized just the speed of the game it was it was like anything that i had practiced like i just didn't i just didn't feel it or sense it in practice as i did in the game bro i literally felt like i was running in 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 quicksand and everybody else was on a track field so i literally knew that after my first year like going into the off season i had to do something to bring my speed up with the speed of the game and so those are some of the things that I worked on was my speed, you know, after my first year. Because I was like, oh, my my first couple of years or whatever, I'm like, man, these guys are big, fast, and strong. And that's the difference when you go from high school to college and from college to the pros. That's why you're playing with the greatest athletes of all time when you get to the pros because the talent weeds itself out. And that's why you have certain guys that are great at, in, in high school, certain guys are good in college, but then they may plateau, they may – tap out max out at the college level and then they may have the talent to get to the pros but then you're like okay you're thinking just because they were great in college that they're going to be great in the pros for a prime example think about peter work and what he did at florida state uh-huh. he was fantastic he uh-huh. was like a he was a highlight reel but then when he got into the pros he was just a regular guy uh-huh. he was in a uniform that's because everybody is just as good and just as great and just as fast. And so I had to bring up my level, my skill set. I mean, that's something that you work on. You can get better at whatever it is that, that you're doing. You know what I mean? Just like us, the podcast. We right. do this on a regular, we're going to get better and better. Right, right, right. So that's we're how, killing it right now. That's how I did w- with the pros. When I got into the league, I saw that there was no there was no place for complacency. I knew in order to get on that level of Jerry Rice, dude, I had to work my butt off. I trust me, I not only watched Jerry Rice, but whomever the receivers were, I watched everybody because I felt like I could grasp something from every receiver and and incorporate it into my game to better myself. And that's what I did. I only not only just watched Jerry at practice, but I watched film. I watched how he carried himself. I watched how he got open. I watched how he ran certain routes on certain defenders. And then I started to understand he started to play games Uh. in practice as he did in the game because every defender is going to be different. You're not going to be faced with one defender and they're going to play you the same way every week. You have to be able to play the game and understand there are going to be different tendencies, different techniques of every individual you're going to be faced. I started to learn that and grasp that even when quarterbacks, even when Bill Walsh or Matt Cavanaugh were back there talking to Steve Young and I would be in an earshot distance and I would listen to them like, you know, what are you looking for? Why did you throw the ball there? I, the West Coast offense is based on precision and timing. Uh. Steve Young is probably any quarterback at that position. They're got to be they very, very smart. But the great ones, they know how to decipher Different matchups because, dude, they got to know every route in the tree while 
got people breathing it down their neck, knowing where to throw the ball, where to deliver the ball, and understanding everybody's run gate. Like my gate is different than Jerry's. Uh, you know what I mean? He has he has something within him, some innate ability to understand when he's gonna break, when he's gonna come out of a break. Right. And that comes with practice. Him what visually seeing how I run, knowing I got my you. body mechanics, knowing when I'm about to come out my break, or knowing when he needs to throw when I got another gear. I got you. Those are some of the things that I usually just sit back and just listen. Like when he talked to the quarterback coach or what have you, he's like, oh, I threw it here or I threw it here based on what I saw. These are some of the things that I never really talked about probably till now. But these are some of the things that being in practice, I started to become a sponge. I wasn't just at practice just to be at practice wasting time. Just, I got you. You know what I mean? That's how I became better each year. Who were the guys that you were going to face as, as corners or DBs that you were like, I got to get a little extra hour of sleep. Number not 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 extra hours of sleep. Nobody never made me lose sleep. But I knew that I had to really come with my game. And early in my career, that was Aeneas Williams when he was with the St. Louis Rams. Okay. And then he had another guy over there, Todd Light, and then Dre Bly, the young guy. Those guys, again, as I started be, to emerge and become a household name and, and really – become a nightmare their defensive coordinators may have lost some sleep uh -huh. because they knew what they were going to get on Sundays so they knew that it was going to be it was going to be a challenge for them whether I scared them or not but they knew it was going to be a challenge not just when I was catching the ball but even in the run game that's what I offer and that's why I always say I'm the greatest next to Jerry Rice I know where Randy stands statistically but there are some things about his game that he didn't play mm. he didn't play the entire game the way it's supposed to be played and that's a and that's a discredit to their coaches because their coaches allowed him to do it uh. we watched film where he wouldn't even come off the ball uh. he wouldn't block for his running backs uh. For me, I understand it's a team game. Whatever I did in the passing game, it enabled, if I didn't get the ball, it enabled my other teammates to get the ball. And then if it's the running game, I knew that if I needed to go get into safety to break my running back free right. to get in, to score, then that's what I'm going to do. If I need to run backside and, and protect the backside, and if just in case my running back break loose and I need to get in a position to spring him for a touchdown – I've done that. All you got to do is just watch film. That's why, that's when you really know that somebody's good for the game. And that's why you know the good from the great. I'm going to throw names at you in the current NFL. Cam Newton. Is he great? Did he have one great season? He in and out of great? He's on a path to greatness. He's on a path to greatness. It's all with it with the league and with anybody. It's all about consistency. Uh. You can't just do it one year, often two years can't be a flash in the pan. You know what I mean? And that's what I think about with some of the, the the receivers now that are getting all this social media platform. You think about Odell Beckham Jr. Is he great? Not yet. Has, does he make some great, spectacular catches? But yeah, that's only one, one catch. He's known ideally for that one catch that right. damn near broke the internet. Yes. And that's where social media has really kind of ruined some guys. Not saying that he, it's ruined him. Mm -hmm. but I, I know Odell. He's a great guy. I think he understands now, you know, this game could be gone just like that. And he gonna, he's, when he get back on that field, trust me, it's not going to change his personality, but he's going to appreciate the game more so now because he sees, like, the game can be gone from you just like that. Right. But he's a great talent. Could he be – could he be greater than what he is? Absolutely. All he got to do is just be who he is. Don't listen to the critics. And some things you're going to bring a lot of to yourself. Like even when I when I played. Do you, you see a correlation between you? You're going to you? bring some of that, but you got to be able to back it up. Just for example, last year, they went to Miami. Then you go to Green Bay, and then and you look, stink it up. You drop a touchdown And pad. you're looking at your hands like. Right. Why, so, do, why do receivers look at their hands when they drop passes? What, your what? hands didn't do it. Yeah, it did. They didn't catch it. But, but like, <laughs> they, I they love Odell, but I'm like, what are you a, looking at your hands for, well, man? Because that's what missed. That's what dropped that ball. Their hands ain't going to, but you ain't having a conversation with you. It's you. The hands yeah, are. That's you. Your hands are you. I got you. Your hands are but, you. But do you know, as a fan, like, as a fan, I'm like, Stop looking at your fucking hands, man. It's not your fucking hands fault. Like, what, is, what else? It's connected to your body. You can't catch with your feet. Well, sometimes you can. Do you see like the stuff? Like, but I think like it's, it's just a lack of focus. You know what I mean? I think you know everything, especially leading up to that game, sometimes you can put too much pressure on yourself and you try so hard, then it'll 
it'll make you drop a pass mm-hmm. because you're trying so hard. I did that. That's what happened in the in the game that I dropped um, the the Green Bay Packers. Oh, right, right. Dude, I tried so hard. My coach was on my butt on the sideline, but I, they were encouraging at the same time. All my teammates, even though I had I had a fumble, I had right. two or three drops. They was like, bro, I had my teammates. Dude, that was the first time I really felt support of a team. My coach, they like, don't worry about it. Block it out. Because they knew it's not like the NBA where you have a best of series. You can go back the next night and redeem yourself. It's not like you got 30 shots. But it, you still have a best of seven series. Right, so you know what got, I'm saying? It's exactly, a different thing. You got an opportunity to redeem yourself. With football, we know. You can't just berate your teammate. You're going to put that guy in the tank. They knew to be encouraging and supportive. But that's what good teammates do. And so when they did that, bro, I was like, oh, my God, This I wanted to go out and really make a big play. Dude, I watched the ball go. My coach said, just relax, T. He knew that I prepared myself for this. I've been waiting for this moment because that's what I did during the offseason. You know, understand the tradition of the San Francisco 49ers uh-huh. of winning the Super Bowl. This was the path to do that, to win these playoff games. Yeah. And we started out as a wild card. Yeah. So at this point, I'm stinking it up. Uh-huh. So my co he goes, T, just relax. He said, if you've done this before, you've done it all year. Just relax. Watch the ball all the way into your hand. Bro, I, I remember I lined up on the left side. I ran a square out or, or, or an, a quick out. Bro, I watched the ball all the way into my hands. Mike, I watched it all the way into my hands, and I still dropped it. Man. Still dropped it. So I understand what he you, was going. You remember through. seeing that? I understand what it's like when you like when you're looking at your hands. Like, oh my gosh, how can you drop this ball? I got you. So again, it's it's what you mean. That's what, what else are you going to look at? I got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? I so got that's you. just part of a, a guy you're going through. You're trying to process. You're trying to get some answers. I got you. You know what I mean? When it immediately happened, like, oh my god, I can't. I'm sure I can't believe I just dropped this. I'm Odell Beckham Jr. You know what I mean? This fans expect me to catch this ball, and you don't. It's the playoffs. There is no tomorrow. It's win or go home. I got you. So that's why, again, that's why the stakes are are so monumental. I got so you. So much magnified in the in the NFL than it is the NBA. That, that makes that makes sense about what you said about the hands. Uh, let me throw a few more names at you. Um, Russell Wilson. Oh, he when I met him, he was well beyond his years as a rookie. When I went and tried, when I worked out for for the Seattle Seahawks, right? He was the guy that worked me out. They had the the guys, the staff. We like, we got a rookie. He's gonna throw to you, and they're like, "This guy is pretty good, dude. Unbelievable, unbelievable." Now, this is a guy that's quiet, confidence. Reminds me of Kurt Warner in a sense. Uh-huh. Don't really say much. Very Christian guy, right. family oriented guy, but he just continues to win. You know what I mean? Continues to defy odds. Drew Brees, you know what I mean? Guys like that, that, you know what I mean? It matters. Football matters to them. You know what I mean? You can tell that that's what they, that's this, they're doing what they've always wanted to do. And I think that's what's so different about me and how I played the game because it wasn't what I always wanted to do. But I adopted a passion for something and I understood that whatever I did on the football field, it literally could be, it, it could make or break us or make, make or break me. Right. I became a playmaker before, after, the playmaker in Michael Irvin. Right. I consider consider myself a game changer. You have those guys that have that it factor that they can change the game when the ball is in their hands. Do you think Tom Brady's the best quarterback in yeah, he's, history? Um, I I think he's up there, but with with Joe Montana, and I say that because how can you how can you discredit a guy that went to a number of Super Bowls every time and they won versus a guy that has gone to uh, Super Bowl a number of times, but he has some losses in that column. So again, so that's his numbers say one thing. I got you. But looking at what Joe Montana did, that speaks volumes as well. <laughs> Who's the meanest defensive players that you played against? Um, like, give I me think, three. Like you just the nasty mean. When I was early on in my career, um, learning the position and understanding that. If you're going to play the position, it's not only you got to block, you got to do a lot of tangibles. When you got to go across the middle and you get you know that there are guys that are hit hunters and that's all they want to do is hit Steve Atwater, uh, like early Michael. 
I was nervous. I was kind of scared. Of him? Yeah. Because, again, like I said, this is when I'm young. So, you know, you don't really have that. I, you're 22, 21. Right, yeah. You don't have that confidence as you as I once did. Was he you a know, beast? At, dude, like, watching film and seeing this guy, like, isn't the one he ended Christian Okoye? Yeah. Like, bro, like, I saw Christian Okoye. Bro, he's a big guy. <laughs> I'm nowhere near as big as Christian Okoye. And, dude, I'm fresh out of college. I'm a little kid. Even two or three years in the league, I'm still a year, I'm still a kid playing a grown man's game, and this guy is a vet. So guys like that. Who else? Um, I I avoided Ray Lewis. Um, was he was he was he fucking vicious when he played? That's uh, he played the game violent, you know. And I say that in a good way. Right. I mean, he played it the right way. You know what I mean? If it was an opportunity with the aggression that defensive players play with, if he could hit you and hurt you. Trust me, that's what they those defensive guys they do that. They don't want anything catastrophically that to, to, right, to happen. Right. You know, in the process in the process. They want some, you out for these next right, this, in the this, process. They want you out today. Right. In the process, it may happen. And that's why I don't like the fact that they protect quarterbacks. You're protecting quarterbacks' legs, but then a receiver can go across the middle and and, and DBs can go at our legs. And and it's no no issue. Where where are they supposed to hit people? Because you you listen. You're you're, you're right now. They're saying right the chest played up. Is that so hard to do when you're going as fast as you guys are going? Even sometimes like right. you know when there's a dirty hit, but sometimes when these when two of you guys, Man. one guy's not even looking at another. Guy, you like a little shoulder dip. It's almost like you're trying to. It's a car going down the street and the windows down, and you're trying to throw a football in a in a in a moving car. It's not you. Even if you're trying to avoid the head, you're going right, to knock heads. Sometimes. Exactly, it's it's hard to do. The game is, especially now, the game is so much faster than it was 10, 20 years ago. It's just the evolution guys of are, man, right? Guys are getting bigger, faster, and stronger. Yeah, I, I hear you. All right, Terrell. 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 Shit. See, you almost made it. I didn't. I didn't. I almost. Hall of Fame. Are we getting in the Hall of Fame? Because I, I'm gonna tell you something. If I do, like, I, I, you're getting I, in the Hall of Fame. I don't. If I make it, it's it's a great honor. And, yeah. How and, could and you this, not be in the fucking this, Hall of Fame? This is no disrespect to the Hall of Fame or anybody that's you know been in before or comes after me. Like, if I make it, I make it. But the stats speak for themselves. Exactly. But what are the stats? But the, criteria, the stats are right. fucking limited. Guy got wrote in there. six Pro Bowls, five first team All Pro, third time NFL receiving touchdown leader. Blah, second most receiving yards ever, third most receiving touchdown. When the f who do I got to talk to? G nah. Give me their number. No, I have no I, idea. No, 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 I'll do it on my own. You're not sending me there. Who do I got to talk to? I have no idea. Who can I, all right, who I can would, I rant I, at? Honest, Just tell me honestly, who can I rant I, at. I would direct you to the Hall of Fame committee. Okay, who are they? they? they you got their number? They, they have no control of it. But what the fuck, though? I mean, okay, <laughs> so even, we get a couple of things. It's like, you played the, the game. It's the beat writers. Whomever. Fuck if, these guys, man. Where are they? Dude, they they're voting uh, on this your, every year? Do your research. Whoever the beat writers are that were covering me during the times that I played, those are the guys that vote. They're fucking babies, man. They're fucking babies, man. Like and they're I like, said, they're like they would, want to punish Terrell Owens. Kiss my fucking ass. Dude, I would, like I said, I would direct you to the Hall of Fame committee. Give me a number. I would direct you to the Hall of Fame committee, but that's not that's not even going to do you any good. Well, so when is the next voting? Like It, it should be coming up here pretty soon. I think October, this is the year. I think the, the, yeah, I think, yeah. Within the next couple of months, I think they have the finalists or whatever. I, I think, think this is the year. Because yeah. I think last year, it was so... By people that liked you, didn't like you, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think like the consensus last year when you were taking, you weren't in, was it was so like this is it's almost disrespectful to the Hall of Fame. Forget you at this point. That's obvious. It's so, I'm, but it's I'm, like this I'm is supposed to be the at Hall this of picture of Muhammad Ali right here, the champ, and understanding what he did and his sacrifice. And there are a lot of people that didn't like him. They hated him. Right. He he became a lovable figure way later. Right. But in and you know, and I'm not comparing myself no, to No, I got you. And because some people they are listening to him like, oh my gosh, he's comparing himself. He's not to comparing me. himself to Muhammad Ali. Right. The same thing with Colin Kaepernick. You know what I mean? They're like, oh my gosh, this guy right here, you know, he got voted citizen citizen of the year. Why is this guy being voted citizen of the year? Didn't JJ Watt just raise twenty something million dollars? So what? It is what it is. But you think about what sacrifice and and what criticism he had to endure. Ali. But people still think, for whatever reason, that he's one of the greatest. Right. I've done nothing 
to scratch the surface as to what he's done or said. Right. But I'm viewed as a terrible guy. Just, I think it's just, ridiculous. But just, just, just let that sink in. For people think that I'm a terrible guy. I'm telling you now. They think that I'm an arrogant, cocky guy on that football field. It, you, you, I brought a, I brought a different level of passion, and it may have rubbed people the wrong way. But who cares? You but played, just, you I, kicked I, ass. It doesn't matter. I, it's, it, my point exactly. Getting to, they're taking those things into account as to why I'm not into the Hall of Fame. I got you. That's that's my point. Well, I, I honestly, and I, and I'm not just saying this at panel. I seriously think this is the year because across the board last year, it made the Hall of Fame and all these uh, faceless, nameless. Hidden people who didn't vote you and look bad. Um, one more question. One Final more question. question. One more question. Jerry Jones, what's his story? He's in a position of power, and when you have people in a position of power, they feel like they can do anything and get away with it. Do you? Do you like him, or like is no, he no, just I, like no, a, no, is I he like, like a boss that you work with, just no, like no, somebody I, at a, at a, no, at a trust show? Trust me. I, again, sometimes you can have a power. You can have power. You can. Do good with that power. You can do good with that power, and you can abuse that power. Mm. And you can use it to your advantage or not. And so Jerry's in a position, again, Jerry Jones, that that name alone says a lot. Uh. You know what I mean? You get a powerful attorney behind you, again, it's going to be a dog fight. Uh. But sometimes some fights aren't worth fighting. But sometimes people have ego, and I think that's... Jerry Jones has ego. Right. So whatever's going on with him and, and Roger Goodell, clearly everybody's not on Jerry's side. Right. Everybody's not on Jerry's side. As right. you saw, have you seen the I guess the the little, you know, back and forth with Arthur Blank? They played, they didn't even speak. Right. But I'm sure at some point they were on speaking terms. All those owners are. But one guy can't speak for the entire owners owners. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's what he was trying to I do. I got you. And so that in and, and even Speaking on that, that's what I tried to say when people said that I did certain things or I did I divided locker rooms. Uh, one or two people can't speak for the majority of the locker room. Uh, so you can't say that I'm a bad guy because you heard from this guy or a specific person and they said they didn't like me or this and that and the other. One or two people versus a 53-man roster or 60 right. people, 65 people in the locker room, you're going to just listen to two people? Right. They don't speak for the majority of the locker room. Right. And I've tried to I've tried to explain that. Right. You know what I mean? But again, people are going to jump on negativity. Right. And again, the fact that again, like I said, I didn't I didn't I didn't do exactly what people told me, but I didn't t told me to do, but I didn't disrespect anybody. Right. You know what I mean? I played the game how I felt like I needed to be played. And, we, and if that was, you know, me being passionate, which was viewed as being cocky and arrogant, then so be it. Right. It rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. And those people don't actually know me as a person. I got you. I got you. Um, I'm going to do every single thing I can to make sure that you are at the big three combine there <laughs> and playing because we'll have a ball. And then, you know what, Ter Terrell? After you're in the Hall of Fame, you, you, you'll have an opportunity to be interviewed by me at the big three because I'm the roving reporter of the big three. So it's like, again, it's like Hall of Fame's cool, best. but I'm over here being interviewed at the big three by Michael Rapport. Okay? So they, it, that's going to happen also. I, I, like I said, I know I can play the game. I know I can play the game. There are guys that I play with in active and not active in the league that have seen me play. Again, they can vouch for me. So again, like I said, even Rashad, Rashad McCants, you know, um, he said he tried to do some stuff to to, to kind of you know get me in there. Um, obviously, TMZ heard about it. People know that I can play a game. That's why it was a big deal. But again, if you're smart, I'm, and I'm not saying you know. Cube is a businessman, smart man. Like I said, I bring an, a, just another level of cachet, you know, when it comes to selling tickets and selling out. Again, look at what they what Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson was supposed to big draw and then, you know, be a big draw even in Philly. And then he was a no-show. That's, you know, that, that's kind of like a, a sore black eye. Right. You know, to, to, to the big three. Right. Not sure exactly what Allen Iverson had going on, but again... To be in your own home city and you not play, not show up for certain things. Like I said, I don't know if that's out of character for him, but I know 
from a fan perspective, when I saw that, I'm like, man, why isn't he playing? Right. You know what I mean? And I'm not speculating as to what may have happened or didn't happen. I got you. But from a fan, I'm saying, because Allen <laughs> Iverson is my guy, but right. from a fan perspective, I'm like, oh my gosh, because I'm just so like So if you any- were the big three, you're there to play ball. Right, you're not exactly. missing. You're right. saying, so if you play, if you're in part of big three season two, number one, you can hold your own. You're not worried about the ball and you're you're not going to be bullshitting nah, around. because it... it there are different every game is going to present different challenges there are going to be times where i maybe needed to score and maybe some time i could play defense rebound i'm a scr- i play college basketball understanding but that the level you're, you're you're saying as far as just the basketball man, you're yeah, good to go man I, man yeah all right man, all right is, i'm just man. checking it straight i'm the i'm the howard cosell of the big three man. i have some cachet over there i'm just saying i have pull i'm saying i would love to see it happen and even more so I would be thrilled to say, this is Michael Rapport at the sideline of the Big Three. I'm here with Terrell Owens. Not in dress clothes, though. Not in civilian clothes. No, you're in this freaking guy's in a base. He's part of the so-and-so team. Right, right, right. All right, T.O., thank you for joining the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. I hope you come back. This was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah.